everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. This is Chris Petrie bringing you some great tidbits and tips for watercolor. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about palettes. And uh, the first thing I always say um, to any of my students is knowledge is power. Um, so get as much knowledge as you can, whatever you're trying to learn about, whether it's your palette, your paints, your paper, uh, techniques, um, favorite artists, Oh, always knowledge is power so as much knowledge as you can gain in any one area of your painting and your artwork all the better so today we're talking about palettes and I had a great uh, question from one of my um, subscribers uh, Judy she asked about my palette how do I uh, approach um, painting with my palette and the paints and how much water how much paint so I'm glad to um, give you guys just a quick little uh, um, uh, informational here on the way I approach my palette and how I work with my palette. So guys and gals, here we go. Uh, first, I have a little checklist here. I'm always using checklists in my everyday job. And then when I do my watercolors, I use checklists. And the first thing I have here is a metal palette. I, I like metal palettes for many reasons. I find it's more easy to mix on metal palettes. I find that <clears throat> metal palettes don't stain. So when I wipe off the watercolor, paints and water it stays uh, fresh and clean and white just like this I notice on some of my plastic over the years painting uh, my plastic palettes tend to get stained with certain colors and they sometimes can have a, a, a staining effect on the plastic which actually will affect the way I'm seeing my colors on my palette so I'd rather have a fresh clean bright white background backdrop for my my paints as I'm mixing them my watercolor paints um, versus having some sort of maybe um, uh, colors on the plastic that might affect uh, the way I'm seeing my colors. So that's why I really, my favorite reason I use metal palettes, besides I think they're just uh, uh, more um, uh, in interesting to use. There seems to be more varieties with um, metal boxes. So my second thing on the list is uh, moist wet paint. Here you can see on my palette I have a lot of uh, fresh squeezed moist wet paint and that's a key for uh, watercolor painting and my technique of course these are my favorite ideas and tips on watercolor painting every artist is different every watercolor artist is different so you just go with what you think works best for you try all the different techniques and all the different ideas and you'll you'll find that that works great to just be always gaining more knowledge and uh, trying different new and different things in your your artwork so here we can see nice fresh moist paint I clean off my brush with a little bit of water and we can go into some more go into some red nice fresh freshly squeezed out of the two paint And that's, that's really, when you go to paint onto your paper, you're going to have really beautiful, clean, bright, vibrant color if you use nice, fresh, moist paint. Whereas if you go into a palette, let's say you keep your palette and it's been sitting there for two weeks, and then you go to paint and you don't have fresh, moist paint, when you try to get vibrant, be vibrant beautiful colors onto your paper, it's going to be really difficult because... There's no, with uh, dry watercolor paints that are not freshly moist and freshly squeezed out of the tube, we, we can't get that vibrant look we're looking for. So what we'll wind up having is a lot of very dull looking colors without any real powerful tonal value and vi a vibrancy. So this is the reason why we, we use freshly squeezed paint, because that's about all we can really get with dry paints if we're just going in and trying to use what's here which is dry and this is what we get when we have nice beautiful fresh squeeze paint nice moist wet paints so we can incorporate that into our paintings okay another idea on palettes is <clears throat> cleaning the palette while painting 
as you paint, your palette is going to have um, colors all mixing and mingling and maybe making some unpleasant colors here and there. Sometimes there are some beautiful colors that are created when your palette is has a lot of paint and water on it. Um, but for the most part, if you want to keep nice, vibrant, clean colors on your watercolor paper, then once things start to get mixed up on the palette and it starts to get a little muddy like this on the palette, It all depends on what you're painting, of course, too. Sometimes a nice, beautiful mixture like that can look good, but the point is when you're trying to achieve a certain look in your painting, always remember that whatever's on your palette, that's going to be what it looks like on your painting. So here I would, you know, come in and take some paper towels. I always have paper towels on hand really quickly, and I always just clean up my palette quick as I'm painting. Maybe if I'm doing a painting or maybe an 8x12 painting, I might clean my palette two, three times as I'm painting. So I have a nice, fresh, clean spot to work on. And then I can just get back to nice, nice, fresh, clean, vibrant colors. And then we're back to some nice, vibrant, beautiful pigment and color. So cleaning the palette's great. Paper towels work the best. I trim them down a little bit with my scissors to uh, make them more convenient to use. And then next we say, seeing, let's see our palette as, as a painting. So let's, as, an, as a watercolor artist, let's, let's think of our palette actually as our, our paper, as our painting. So whatever we're looking at down here on our palette, that's essentially what's going to be showing up on our canvas, our painting, our watercolor paper, let's say. Um, I had this insight uh, the other day while thinking about this, making this video, and I thought that was the most simple way to really explain it is our palette really is, in, a, in essence, most of the time, what our painting is, our, our finished work. So whatever your paints are looking like here on your palette, that is what's going to be um, transferred over to the to the to the watercolor paper um, and our next uh, list item on the list is storing palette with care everyone uh, palette storing the palette is important I will give you my best tip on storing my watercolor palette what I do is um, when I'm done painting I fold it up and I put it into a, a, a baggie like a ziplock baggie but before I do that I just wet a sponge, dampen a sponge a little bit, or dampen some paper towels a little bit, and I just put put them in the palette before I close it up, and then I put it in a bag, and that tends to keep the paints moist. So if you paint like once a week on the weekends, or you know every couple days, that works great, and it keeps your, your paints moist, and if you have to, another tidbit, tip here is I like to uh, spritz the paint with a little bit of, with a small spray bottle, I, before I paint, maybe a half an hour before, I just go in and do a nice little spritz of the paint, and that also moistens up the paints. But the point is to definitely often squeeze new paints into your um, your palette. That seems to work great. What do you think? This way you can always get that great, nice, moist paint, which is the nice, fresh, vibrant, vibrant colors you're looking for. And then uh, the last thing I will always encourage everybody to try different palettes. Try different ones. Try plastic ones. Try uh, metal palettes. When you try different things, you learn about them, and then you say, well, I like the metal palette for this reason. I like the plastic palette for that reason. Maybe you like to use both. I do use, <clears throat> I use both plastic and metal, but mostly 90% of the time I use my metal box. But I do uh, sometimes use um, plastic, especially with like a larger watercolor painting. I find some of the plastic boxes have a little bit larger working areas which works good for like a larger painting and then <clears throat> I guess uh, another interesting idea here with mixing nice vibrant juicy paints is the effect you can get on your paintings so let's take a look here again I'm always keen to just clean my, my palette quickly and then let's say we're gonna go in and do some some flowers here we'll just do some simple blue and 
and then I check my brush on some on some tissue to get some of the water. So I would say another great tip with using the palette and paints is always keeping a good mo monitoring your brush and how much water is in your brush. So you, when you go into your water supply, you can always check a little bit of water off your brush just so you're not getting too much water. It all depends on what look you're looking for in your on your painting. So I'll put some blue, some yellow ochre, some alizarin crimson. Maybe a little bit of purple. And then I'll clean my brush frequently, tap off a little bit of excess water. Okay, so now I'm starting to use a little more water and letting the paints mingle a little bit as I go through my... Okay, now's about the time I would go back in with some paper towel. I'm going to be using the same colors over and over in this painting, three or four colors, so I don't have to worry about losing track. I always know the same colors I'm using. Go back in, get some more fresh, freshly squeezed paint. Checking the water off. Go into some green. And then now I'm going to work into some fresh paint again, fresh squeezed out of the two paint. Clean my brush a little bit, tap off some water, a little more water. Check off some water here on the paper towel. A little bit of blue, a little bit of shadow colors here. I'm thinking the light's going to be coming from this direction, from the right. I'm using a reference photo for my my flowers here. Just a couple little flower ideas on the watercolor paper to uh, help me uh, work out this simple uh, sketch here, this little small composition. Okay, so that's the idea of using nice, fresh, squeezed two paint, getting lots of nice, beautiful colors onto the paper. When things get a little bit uh, watery and uh, 
a little bit uh, too wet and moist on the can on the palette. We just go in with our paper towels, keeping the palette clean regularly, and then we can go back in and just keep doing the same process, grabbing the same colors we were before. Nice, freshly squeezed out of the tube paint. Cleaning the brush off in between each color. And then we can go back in. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for all my new subscribers. And thanks for the questions. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.